how do you network? Probably one of the best ways to career and maybe personal life success, building a great network is probably it. What do I have to offer? Why would they have to listen to me? I mean, it always felt like fake to me. And the thing that made me kind of pivot, look at networking as like application of curiosity. The best networkers I've seen are naturally immensely curious about other people. If you can't build that, you're going to fail at this. You want to play these infinite games that you want to be in things for the long term. Being a new person is such a huge advantage. It's a bit controversial. Many women are really bad at it, are bad at networking. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another exciting episode of the one and only Arthi and Sriram show with me, Sriram and Arthi. There we go. Uh, <laughs> um, before we get started, we say this every week, but we mean it. Thank you so much for all the love, all the support for, we need a name for our fans. We didn't name like, I don't know, like the, uh, the Kelsey brothers have the 92 percenters and we have the daddy gang for Alex Cooper. We need the, uh, you know, the Arthi and Sriram groupies or uh, the Arthi and Sriram stirs. We need a name. So I don't know. We have, uh, okay. uh, if you have suggestions for a name, let us know. But as always, if you listen and watch or uh, uh, hear us in any way, we appreciate that. Uh, we do have an ask. Uh, it, this matters uh, just given the platforms that we put out the show on, uh, which is if you are watching or hearing this anywhere, uh, do like, subscribe. Uh, the best way is to find us one. YouTube, we are youtube.com slash at Arthi and Sriram. Go like and subscribe and hit the follow notifications. We are also everywhere podcasts can be found. Uh, we have Spotify. If you're on Spotify, you can watch the video. Go uh, follow us there. Leave a comment or an Apple or pretty much everybody else. And we also, if you want to kind of just get an email notification every time we put an episode, we are Arthi and Sriram.com. So we're pretty much all over the internet, right? On Twitter, uh, there's a bunch of other places on uh, on AOL GeoCities. Okay, maybe not AOL GeoCities, but still. Sh- um, what do you think of the Dosa Club? Uh, it <laughs> feels very carb heavy, I would say. Right? I like it. I like it. I like it. Uh, we, we'll keep workshopping that. We'll keep work. <laughs> we'll keep that in the back pocket, it's, uh, uh, which is a polite way of somebody wants. It's, it's very. That's very polite. It's yeah. very polite. Uh, so, uh, uh, we'll keep it in the back pocket, right? Like, or we we'll put a pin on that uh, as a big like. But no, uh, thank you so much. Um, but we were really excited for today's episode, and the reason is this is probably one of the topics that we get asked about a lot, and over the years, uh, we both sort of had a chance to talk about this to other people. Uh, we've sort of been able to mentor other people on it, learned a lot ourselves. And I would say the core theme that we get asked about is how do you network? And we're going to break why, why the way of network even, what it even means. But it, this can mean everything from make building relationships, building authentic relationships, getting to know people, uh, you know, building ties to people. There's a lot in there. We're going to unpack all of that. But this is probably the most asked for a topic uh, for us for a long period of time and we want to get into that and maybe but I guess before you start there before we get into details of networking why why do you have to network at all like you know some people for the longest time I viscerally hated that whole concept of like oh my god I have to network Um, and we've talked about this before on our episodes why network at all Mm -hmm. so I would say two things the first thing I would say is if you're listening to this and you have preconceived notions of what the word network means or whether you are good or bad at it. Just set them aside for just a little bit and hear us out. The second thing I would say, which follows on that, which answers Arthi's question is building a network is probably one of the best ways to career professional and maybe personal life success in many, many, many ways. Uh, We have personal stories ourselves. It has been an integral part of how uh, we've gotten to wherever we are. Uh, I know many, many people where this has been foundational to how they have built companies, how they have ascended the corporate ranks, how they have built deep personal ties. So uh, if I could ever list a stack rank of things, of things that are almost guaranteed to increase the odds, nothing can actually have a guarantee success, but increase the odds of you um, being successful, especially in a corporate environment, building a great network is probably it. So, and we're going to get into what that means. Um, yeah. And uh, maybe you know, maybe a good place to start is the word network itself. Uh, and I'm sure 
if you hear this, your immediate for a lot of people, the immediate reaction is that sounds transactional. Like that sounds fake. That is a thing that you do when you go at a conference and you hang around awkwardly at a party and then you bounce out. That is not what I'm talking about. That may be an element of what I'm talking about. That's not what I'm talking about. What I am talking about is building fulfilling, deep, authentic relationships over long periods of time. Uh, one of the core elements of the show and our life and how we live it is the idea that you want to play these infinite games, that you want to be in things for the long term. And I think building relationships at the heart of it. So what does this mean? Yeah. This means that when you are encountering people, when you are listening to everything else on this episode, you are thinking about things over a long period of time. You're thinking about how do I get to know and work and maybe build a relationship with this person over many, many years. You're not thinking about how do I just get this job, uh, get my deal done, or get them to introduce me to somebody, or get this, yeah, yeah, get an offer, whatever the thing that you may be. So you're looking at it over a long-term perspective. And maybe that if you remember nothing else from this whole episode, if you just remember that, which is you want to think about all of this over the long term, um, that would be a great win. And the reason for that is, you know, one is that, uh, first of all, this is empirically, it's the only way I've found things to work. If you're not thinking yeah. about this long term, um, if you're just kind of saying, hey, I just want this, you know, an interview or an offer, you know, I just want to impress you in this one situation because I need something, I just don't find it works. And there's a few reasons for that, but I think the most fundamental reason, and I'm kind of curious to get your take on this too, is human beings are smart. And if you are anyhow fake, and if you are anyhow short-term focused, and sometimes you maybe need to be, but if you're short-term focused, they can sense it. Um, and as opposed to, I think, if you are genuinely trying to look out for that best interest, if you're trying to say like, hey, I want to sort of build something over many, many years with you, or you've known somebody in the past, I think they react positively. So, and you can't fake this. But I'm curious to know yeah. what you think. I think so. For me, at least, uh, I kind of approach this a little differently than you did, uh, I think. Um, for me, you know, initially, when it was like, hey, go talk to people or go network, go to this conference, go to this event, meet someone, cold mail someone, it just felt like, oh, why? Why would they, one, that sounds icky and transactional, two, what do I have to offer? Why would they have to listen to me? Like, these are you know, people who are like really doing well in their careers or their lives. And what is it that I can go offer kind of thing. And it always felt like fake to me. And the thing that made me kind of pivot itself and like think about this differently was to not think about, you know, what you had to offer or emailing them or that kind of like forget the tactics of it. But really, I mean, as, as people, we're generally curious people, right? Like we generally want to know how the world works, how things happen, how people work or do things the way they do do it. And especially if it's like outside of technology or in a different area of tech, you're just generally curious. You want to know how things work. And instead of like you have different ways to go pursue this, instead of like Googling things, looking at Wikipedia, learning, whatever, you could actually email somebody and you could go talk to them and you could go figure, hey, tell me how you do this or why you do this. Or you could just uh, apply curiosity in interesting ways to go be able to learn from somebody. So to me, it was like networking didn't feel like, what do I have to offer kind of thing? But it's like people generally want to talk about what they're doing, especially if they're like proud of it, if they've done something that other people haven't, they want to share the knowledge. And, and oftentimes, you know, when people email us, we are kind of doing that now. And so I kind of look at networking as like application of curiosity in interesting ways mm -hmm. uh, and being able to talk to someone and work with someone to go understand them or to go be able to share what you know there. And and to your what you said, it is long term, right? It's not it's not like it's not like you find something and you're like, goodbye, that's it. But you really want to know who these people are or what they do. So um I kind of see it less as like what is it that you do, but why you do it and kind of apply it over a long time horizon. And, and that is incredibly rewarding for you as like, as a person because you get to know so much more than just like Googling something or looking up something on Wikipedia. I don't know. Anyway, that's kind of how I yeah. looked at it as like um, networking as such. It's, a, it's less about the person itself. It's about the thing that you want to know 
and be helpful for or be able to impart something in return yep. over a long enough period of time. Yeah, and I think you I think you made a very profound point in there. The best networkers I've seen are naturally immensely curious about other people. And I think if yeah. you don't have that or if you can't build that, you're going to fail at this. Uh, right. Because at the heart of it, you have to go into any meeting, any email thread, one, genuinely curious about other person's life experience, their points of view, yeah. what they're doing. Um, and if you're not, and a lot of people are not, it is going to be much harder. And I'll give you an example. One of the best people I know at building relationships is Ari Emanuel. He's legendary for this. And he's one of the most curious people I know. He is fantastic at sending random authors, and I say random, like people not in his world, like people who don't know him, they're sending him an email or reaching out to them or some a sports person. Out there. Some, people has no reason to meet professionally, but he's always so curious. And when you meet somebody who's very curious and it really helps also if they are successful, uh, good things happen. Okay. Now, so so we talked about being authentic. We talked about being curious. Uh, let's get begin to a few specifics. And because I think these are elements in various kind of stages of people's careers or things they might run into. The first part, uh, I'm sure some people listening to this uh, would go, okay, uh, these things sound a bit easier when you are a bit later in your career. Uh, when you are, say, uh, I don't know, you've been in the professional world for 15, 20 years, uh, and you reach out, and maybe the other person has a chance to know who uh, who you are. Uh, Arthur and I kind of, you know, I, I, when, when you Google this stuff comes up, and we kind of privileged to, uh, we have some privilege there. But I do think a lot of this also applies much earlier in your careers, and we did a lot of that when uh, we were just up and comers, I would say. Um, and one example, let's get out of, way of, let's say you start a new job, and you are, if this could apply for anybody, let's say you're in your mid-20s or you're kind of starting off. The first thing I recommend people is being a new person is such a huge advantage because everybody wants to meet the new person. And there's a window of time, and I don't know how long it lasts, but you know, it definitely lasts more than a couple of weeks. It definitely stops after like four or five months where you could essentially email anyone in the organization without an excuse and say, I'm just new here. I would love to meet you. Now, you can not You can still do that afterwards. You can still be like a few years into a company and do that. But when you're new, you know, you're a large organization, you know, there's something about being new where people was like, oh, you know, I'll grab coffee with you. And I'll give you an example. When I joined Facebook in, um, you know, 2013, um, I made it a point to basically email every single, what I thought of, interesting person in the company. Uh, that is important. Interesting does not mean senior or famous. Uh, I obviously, you know, I sort of email all the well-known executives, but I also email like engineers whose names would come up or there'd be always this person like, oh, this person also knows the secrets of how the system works. I would just kind of do a traversal of the graph of people mm -hmm. and email everybody. And I would send them the exact same note. I would say, hey, I'm Sriram. I'm new here. I just joined. I'm working team, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I have nothing to do with your team, but I've heard a lot about you. I would love to go walk, get a coffee. And Almost every case, there was one famous exception, uh, uh, which I won't get into. Uh, almost every case, uh, that person said yes. Um, and we had a perfectly rewarding, uh, uh, perfectly interesting conversation. And yeah. that led to so many good things. Because number one, they love meeting the new people. They love that you're showing enthusiasm. You get a chance to ask them some very dumb questions, which you probably can't get away with. Maybe two years into a company, you can't be like, hey, explain Facebook to me. And you're like, oh, okay, you've been here for two years. Like, you should have a take on that. Uh, but also you're building these loose informal ties. And if you're in a medium to large company, these loose informal ties are really important because those people are the first folks when you reach out for a favor, or maybe you're thinking of a job transfer, or you want to know how something is going on. So if you're new and you could be the most junior engineer or the most junior product marketer, email everybody, right? Email yeah. your exec, everyone up your chain, email your CEO, um, um, and email like their peers, uh, you know, uh, just go broad. Some of them will say no, but who cares, right? If they say no, uh, that's fine too. But almost always they will say yes. They'll always definitely come out and say hi, and that gives you things. That's kind of my first step. But I, 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 I've been talking yeah. about this for a long time. Yeah, I, and I think, you know, like you said, I think the worst case is you get told no, but that doesn't really matter. Even if like a small percentage of them say yes, one, you get to build these really rich relationships early on in your career in this in this company. But two, if you're working at a really big company, right, um, a lot of products or a lot of uh, things that you build, features, functionality that you build, spans a bunch of organizations. And what I've noticed is oftentimes you'll want to like ship something, but then there is this other team that needs to be involved or 
you need to go talk to a different org where you want to be like wouldn't they use this feature wouldn't that be good and then you know like a, a few months in or a year and you'd be like who do i know in that team who do i have to look up and and i'm talking about like a really big organization like when we worked at microsoft it was like that right um and often times these kind of you know first set of initial conversations really help because then you kind of don't start cold and you can start with that and be like i you know i reached out to you then i hope things are good like i'm trying to do this and i'm building this thing i don't know what your roadmap looks like and i've i've been able to do things like that where getting other teams or other products to like incorporate what i've built or shipped and that's like net positive for the company itself i'm like i'm talking about something very tactical but also what i've noticed is from the other people the recipient standpoint this is great because one everyone wants to talk to that new person but two often times these people are so into their systems into their day to day that it breaks them out of that and it's kind of refreshing because you kind of forget after a point what it was like to be that new person coming in uh-huh. so they get to learn from you as well um and then often times i've noticed this uh there will always be something you know they'll be like hey we are starting this new team i wonder who can like who's good at like whatever to be able to like build this thing out or i need to hire like a pm on this thing who did i talk to oh yeah that guy who was just like new who had emailed me you know it's always good to have you know you show up in their roster in their mind because you never know how things will all pan out <laughs> and you know they'll be like what well, you said you were like an expert in payment systems uh i'm having this problem or i'm building this new thing can you come help me and stuff like that so this is when we say networking it's not like get to be friend- like often times people misconstrue it to be like be friendly enough with somebody else so you can ask them a favor down the road that's not it this is really like about building these organic relationships so that at some point it it is organic enough for you to like build stuff together or work together or do something with each other or maybe not you yeah. just get to know each other really well and these these things these wonderful things happen only because these two people Uh, met each other and knew each other and that happened because you sent them a cold email yeah. so you should start that today yeah the by the way this interesting flip on this which is and i used to do this early in my extra career where let's say you're young right let's say in mid 20s etc and the company and this kind of works for large companies um or medium sized companies and the company just hires somebody super senior right like yeah. i would be the first person to send them an email right like so yeah. you here i am like you know random uh, l60 pm at microsoft which is a reference with a few of you will get basically means a, you know someone probably more junior and i there's a new senior vp uh, who heads up like a 5000 person organization when they join the company they will get an email and be the first person to them like hey blah blah you know welcome to the company i work and so allowed to meet you now this is actually super interesting because what winds up happening is when they're new and having sort of been the senior person coming in you don't know anybody you, you just kind of you don't have many friends i mean you're probably you know coming in with a few people you know so the fact that some random person is reaching out to you is great it makes you feel wanted it makes yeah. you feel like oh there are people here who are cheering for me and this new senior exec is often nervous uh and then what happens is you have a period of time before that new person has their own routine and they're sucked into their meetings and their schedules and it's really harder for you to mm-hmm. get on that calendar get on the radar but when they do, when they knew they don't know anything and they're like you just see friend the person who's who didn't have to say hi who said hi and it's a great way to build a relationship and I built up some very great relationships over that so i would say being new is a gift on uh, is a gift and use it yeah i uh, totally okay so um you've called email mm-hmm. uh you get a response you get to now be in that first meeting what do you do in a meeting great question okay so this is this is interesting because i was thinking about uh, uh you know we always tell people like hey we should do this meeting but then i don't think people know what to do in a meeting and it's hard to describe and i think every one of us has a different way of doing it here's what i do uh and uh, uh what i try and do is you meet somebody you have 30 45 minutes uh, first of all uh you know uh, you uh, mean person meetings are always better but you take what you can get uh, uh and what you do is first you tell them a little bit about your story uh where you came from where you were born what you've done and i think it's very important to lay out like your story uh, all the way from childhood and here's why a lot of people just say like i'm working on team x and y but 
what the other person is often looking for is a little bit of like a conversational hook or a platform to build a model of you, of who they're interacting with. And all they have is, let us say you're working on, uh, I don't know, the database infra team, right? Like the, the only logical spot for the conversation to go to is like, oh, tell me what the database infra team is working on, which would be a great segue, but it doesn't portray the totality of you. Uh, but as opposed to if you said like, look, I went to so-and-so, uh, I went to this school, I did this, and we are similar in this way. It just gives that person, one, a lot better picture of who you are. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, and then second, it gives a lot more ways for the conversation to go. Now, I think before you go into the meeting, you should absolutely be doing one thing, which you should research the you know, 100% out of the other person they're meeting, right? You should know every single thing written, every single thing that's been published about them, every single thing that you can find out. So before you go in, like you know uh, as much as possible. So then it, we've been, for example, when you're telling your story, it's a great way to say like you've done your homework. Like for example, if I meet somebody and you know, they know not only that, for example, I was in social media, but they pull out some random old thing that I worked on from Max 15 years ago, it means, oh, they put in a little bit of, uh, they spent five minutes Googling me, right? Mm -hmm. And I have no idea whether that person's uh, 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 good or not, but at least they put in some amount of effort, which I mean, yeah. takes me like, oh, okay, this person puts their effort and I'm now obliged to, you know, give them some that upper level of respect. So one, that is two. Now, the actual conversation itself, uh, I think you can go, you can take any number of directions. Uh, I think a few points you absolutely want to hit are, one is, you want to really focus on what the other person's goals are. You want to say like, hey, here you are. Uh, what are you trying to do? What are you trying to accomplish? Uh, and you're, you're trying to figure out how can you be helpful to the other person? Yeah. Because the key, yeah. this all this works is if you, you can only build a long-term relationship and you can add value. Like one of the worst things I think I see people do is they go into any meeting, and this can be any meeting. I see it even now at like, you know, some very sort of senior levels, you go and you're like, well, I work in X, Y, and Z, and our team needs whatever, right? And you're like, great, right? And sometimes it works, but often I think it's so much better if you're like, okay, what are you trying to accomplish, right? What are your goals? Uh, what is your team trying to do? Why do you even join here uh, if it's a new person? And that just gives you a much better picture of everything about the person and, you know, and what you can do to kind of uh, get whatever you want done. That's number two. The third part is let's say a 30, 45 minute meeting, meeting, Right, like I think what you want to try and do is a couple of things. Uh, one is you absolutely want to give them something that they don't know of before. And this is a little tricky because I think you need to figure out what the other person's interested in. Now, if it's a senior exec, I think, and you're a junior, one, I always tell junior people this, uh, the best thing, advantage you have when you're meeting somebody really, really senior is you have time, right? And mm -hmm. you have access to on the ground information. Um, mm -hmm. And any credible founder I've met from all the way from like Bill Gates to Zuckerberg to Elon, they always love hearing from people on the front line. So if you go in and say, look, like, hey, I'm so-and-so engineer, but what I want to talk about is like, I've heard X and Y and Z from our customers, right? Mm -hmm. That's great. Mm -hmm. Information is super valuable. Um, so you at least want to give them some piece of information. You want to ask them yeah. some question, which gives them something back. Finally, uh, two things, which I think are super important, just to finish this up. One is you want to ask them for other people you should meet. Um, right. And if you're new, this is super important because this gives you two things. One is it gives you uh, other people are valuable in the organization. And if somebody's name comes up a lot, you're like, oh, that person's an interesting node in this graph and you should meet them. So yeah. you want to kind of say, who should meet them? And maybe they can give you an intro. And the second part is you want to say like, how can I help you? And what's the best good way to follow up? Often they won't have anything, but even the act of asking is a great gesture. But sometimes they will, and then that gives you a reason to come back to it, which I'll get later, which is like, often people just do one meeting and just forget you and they kind of move along. You want to kind of build up like a relationship with touch points over time. So anyway, there's a lot in there, but I think you can pack it in over 30 minutes. And like a lot of things, if you do a few of these, you become very, very good at it. So anyway, that's sort of my little yeah. recipe for a meeting. I think that's great. I think, uh, and this generally broadly applies to most first time meetings, not just like a cold email follow up kind of thing. So like generally being prepared, being curious, being interested, offering to help, uh, then ending it with who else I should meet, like having some sort of a continuation touch point. I think all of these are really crucial. I guess, Sriram, like we talked a lot about big companies, uh, meeting like execs, that kind of thing. How is networking different if you're a founder? Uh, like one question I get asked a lot is, should founders network with uh, VCs, with investors, uh, before they are thinking of fundraising or before they should, they even like 
have a product market fit or like a company that's like taken off kind of thing. How, at what point would you say, yeah, you get to know the investors in your space at least, or do you, would you then say, or, you know, the other school of thought, it seems to be no need, just put your head down, get to work. Uh, when the timing is right, you can always like reach out and uh, figure out like fundraising, that kind of thing. What is, what's your advice for founders as such? Uh, this is a contentious topic. So, yeah. Uh, I love, and we have a debate about this because we we obviously you know see it from Aarti with the founder perspective and me from the VC perspective and we debate about this. So what I always tell founders is uh, if you have momentum and traction, like nothing else matters. Like if you have yeah. an app in the app store that overnight 100 million people use and you make a lot of money, like every VC is going to be banging on your door uh, uh, and that's great, right? Now, a lot of people are not in that bucket. Maybe they may get in that bucket, but you're not there yet. Mm-hmm. And the question is, what do you do? Now, I strongly disagree with the idea that you don't beat VCs. And I, I and here are the reasons why people who say that, say that. They say, one is meeting with VCs is a waste of time because they're not interested in writing a check. Uh, often the people you wind up meeting are junior people and they're just collecting information. They don't have the power to write a check. Um, and just you should spend all of your energy on building product, and then when you're ready to fundraise, create a market, go out there. Now, mm-hmm. I see the logic in that. I think it's a bit flawed just empirically from what I see. Now, I don't think building a product and taking a coffee meeting a week are uh, mutually exclusive. You can absolutely build a product and get to meet a VC. Uh, and, but I think the idea that you can just meet somebody during a fundraise is flawed. Now, again, if your momentum and numbers are up and to the right, you know, you are chat GPT and the world loves you. You have no trouble. Absolutely. Do that. But for everyone else, and here's why, uh, for a VC to invest in a founder, I find is a deeply personal decision from the VC. It is not just a purely an intellectual framework. And if you're in the world where somebody says, comes and pitches you and they have a deck, et cetera, and you have say a week or, you know, and sort of you know, in the 2021 era, you had like a couple of days. Now you probably have more weeks to consider this. You don't have a lot of period of time to make up your mind on what do I think about this human being? Do I want to work with this person for the next eight to 10 years? Because that's the commitment you're making as a venture capitalist. Uh, how, what is their ability to execute? Like, do they get things done? Which is often the core test that you want to go build. Uh, now, the best way to get a person to uh, uh, kind of give you give a VC data point is get to know them. For example, if there is a founder who you've gotten to meet, say, a few times over the last year, every time they, first time you met them, they said, hey, we're going to do this thing. And you think to yourself, well, I don't know what's a good idea, but sure, go for it. And then three months later, you talk to them or they send you a message or they send you an email. They've done the thing. You're like, oh, okay. You know, they're on the path. Six months later, they're continuing on. You're like, oh, all right, this person really backing up. Nine months later, they kind of feel like, you're absolutely sending an email or a Slack message to your partner saying like, we should take a look at this person, right? Because you've now, right. in your mind, you know the person, you know their ability to execute. And you sometimes, a lot of VC firms, right? Like you, some, you know, some firms have one partner has can pull the trigger, so to speak. A lot of other firms are much more social consensus based. So you need to give this person like ammo to be like advocate for you. And, and it's yeah. a very personal decision often. So I always tell founders, if you need to start building a relationship with these people, so they you get to, they get to know you. Now, the reverse of that is like, you need to get to know them also. Like, because you don't want to, uh, the pitch is like a weird, like, uh, uh, pitch is an interesting dynamic where it's like a, a dating situation. And yeah. you often may not get to know the VC as well as if you got to meet them over the last year, you had a few coffees with them, and you're not meeting them during the dynamic of, hey, I'm here to raise money. Are you going to give me money or not? That obviously... That's the bread and butter of what a lot of us do. But I think it's often easier where you're like, hey, I met this person three, four times. I kind of know what this person thinks like. I know how they're going to operate. I sent them this question. This is how they responded. It gives me a flavor of how they might work with me if they're on my board or if they're on my cap table. And I just think the more you know about each other going into a relationship, the better. Now, I know a lot of people disagree with me, but this is sort of what I find. Um, myself. But I think you and you might have different thoughts from the founder, founder perspective. Yeah, I think so. Look, um, I think I broadly agree with you. I think it is good to know, uh, from a founder standpoint, it is good to know who's writing you your check, uh, if, especially if they are like writing enough of a check that you're going to, they're going to be on your board. 
And that's, you know, it's a long relationship, right? Like you don't want to go into this in like one pitch meeting and a few due diligence meetings. And then you're like, that's it. Like, I don't know who, who's this person. Um, you want to make sure that they are a good fit for you, your values, your ethics, how you want to build the company, all of that. So I kind of see selfishly from are they values aligned with you as an individual and with your business, right? And so you got to go meet them, get to know them. Um, I also think networking for a founder is generally good for things like recruiting. Uh, most good founders are, you, you'll find them to be fantastic recruiters. And they're always trying to like find people, close people, always looking around, always talking to like interesting other people in their areas, like the strong engineers and that kind of thing. And that's not going to come if you're just in your shell, right? You're going to have to like put yourself out there and reach out to people. So it is important for you to go out and do this. I have seen founders who will do this exact far end of the spectrum where they're at every conference, every event, every random party, thing uh and they're always always there and you're all you know who these people are and they're always showing up they're the first to show up last to leave and you've got to wonder you're like how do you have the time to do all of this stuff does your company not suffer because you are the founder or you're one of the co-founders you're the ceo you can't be out there x number of days a year just constantly doing these things without you know your team losing momentum in some way because your team looks up to you at some point to be like are they here are they committed and they can understand you being like hey i got to go meet with these investors it's really important for our next fundraising round hey i got to go close these engineers you know it's really important for us that they get but they don't really understand if you're like totally checked out uh and you're at like all the events yeah. all the conferences all the time so I've seen that too, right? And they kind of wear it like a badge of honor that they get invited to all these places. Of course, they get invited to it because what's the downside for the people who are inviting? Of course, you want to like have this relationship with the founder. So if you are a founder, you kind of have to understand what that balance lies, where that balance lies and what you have to be doing. So you have to go network. I don't actually believe anymore that you just have to put your head down and go to work. Yes, that's like true. We may be very, very early part of starting something when you're like the... Uh, minus one to zero uh, phase. But if you're like at a point where you know what you're doing, you have to go build it, you have to get it out to the market. I think you need to like get yourself out there a bit, but you kind of have to know where that balance lies for you, where you have to build confidence in your team that you're still there, you're still leading this business, you're still focused on the success of it. And you also have to know who are the investors scope out the area like when you're fundraising you should be at a point where you know everyone you're running a process mm -hmm. and you're coming from a position of strength where you're able to go into every investor or angel or vc firm or whoever and know exactly who's going to write you a check who's not where do they stand all of that and be able to run this full process that is like buttoned up and that's on you to be able to yeah, do it yeah um i, I want to bring this a little bit back to the networking theme and uh yeah because I think there's one element of what you said, which is sometimes people struggle with, which is uh, how do I measure the whether what I'm doing is giving me any ROI or not? And which is I'm doing these coffee meetings, I'm meeting somebody. Does this matter? Like, will this person ever matter to me? Like, is this a good use of my time? Um, and I find that like a little hard to always answer because I think it has to go back to the curiosity bit. All right. Like, a is you have to do it without expecting ROI. Um, and you have to be like, I really want to be curious about this, uh, what this person's up to. Now, the challenge on the other side, I'll give, so I just get, before I give you sort of my algorithm, the challenge on the other side is um, you obviously have limited time. And if you start doing this, you're going to have a lot of people asking for time. And the more you, you kind of climb up your career, a um, lot of people want your time and you can't do an infinite number of these. So how do you sort of sort this out? And the way I sort of think about it is, uh, you know, every month, uh, sometimes I have like a spreadsheet, mostly it's in my head, Arthi knows this, is I sort of have a general sense in my head of, am I meeting new people or not? Yeah. And I have a rough, I have like to have like a rough balance in my life about trying to meet someone new. And when I say someone new, that could mean anything. It could mean 
someone new in a different domain that I'm really interested in. So for example, I'm obviously new here in the UK. I've been spending a lot of time in policy worlds. I'm spending a lot of time meeting people policy there. But also in the UK, then London has a lot of other amazing industries and I'm meeting people from the world of art or sports or uh, many, many other things. And I'm always trying to see like, hey, am I just meeting somebody and often without any agenda because it's just interesting. That's number one. The second part is you, are, you're trying to figure out like, are you... Uh, keeping in touch with really key people uh, uh, who are influencers in your career, uh, and, the, you know, and that could mean former managers, that could mean notable people in the industry you work with, and keeping in touch, by the way, could doesn't mean a coffee uh, meeting, which I'll get to. It could mean sending them a note, sending them an article, sending them a text message, uh, 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 sending them a card. It could mean any number of things. We're just staying on top of mind for them. Um, and the yeah. third part, I actually think a lot of people sort of forget this, is... Uh, is you really want to find a way to keep in uh, keep in the loop with your former colleagues. And if you've been in the profession world for, say, like seven, eight years, you're going to start really start piling up former colleagues. And you'll be surprised like how off, like those are very key relationships for you to go build on, where you those are great referrals for you. Those are great people to hire or be hired by uh, who can give you, like, and they'll kind of go to other companies and so on, and they can help you close a deal or... Uh, uh, tell you what is going on. And I often find that, you know, people forget to stay in touch with that former person that you know, and I try and find a way to that. So it's a little bit of a balancing act. I don't have a good rule of thumb, but the answer is I don't think you can do it from a pure ROI basis, right? If you go to every meeting, be like, is this person going to help me? They will sense it. And uh, you might need to do some of that, but I do think like having a balance of meeting new people, meeting people who have been, meant deep things to you in the past, obviously your friends and uh, people who are close to you, um, and then your former colleagues. I try and like mix it all up uh, in, in various different ways. That's what I, that's what I try and do. I think um, I am nowhere as organized as you are with respect to meeting new people kind of thing. Like it's almost very like haphazard happenstance for me. But I think for me, the one very tactical metric that I use um, is coming out of that meeting, am I happy? Mm. Um and that generally speaks for a lot for me. Generally, that that means in a metrics-oriented way, um, it was a good meeting um, where I got to know something that I didn't know before. Uh, the other person also felt good about the meeting. You can always sense that. Um, you felt like you could apply something that you learned into something else, or you could, if nothing else, help them out in some way that uh, had not happened as of yesterday. And so, like, for me, I come out of this going, was that a good meeting? Was that tangible? Like, do I feel good about it? And I usually, like, jot it down, write it down. I think about, like, why that was good? What could we do? And then I kind of, like, map this to who are similar people or other people I should be getting to know or getting to meet, that kind of thing. And I go from there, right? Like, so for me, it's like, it's kind of, it's, it's a graph where I just start with a node and I, like, kind of spread out and reach out from there. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it, like you said, it doesn't have to be tech. Tech is one space, but um, there are like other areas, other verticals that I've always been curious about or know nothing about and have tried to like break into. And it's just a great way for me to like know that and uh, like improve my skills kind of thing and uh, go from there. Um, how much, if you had to like quantify a, a week of your life, what percentage would you set aside for say, Quote and quote network. Yeah, I, I think the VC job is a bit weird because a lot of what you're trying to do is you're trying to seek out on the edge and you're trying to meet yeah. people building new things. So it is the job in so many ways. But yeah. when I was doing more of a classic operational role, I would say at least if I was not doing two, maybe three coffee meetings a week and yeah. meeting at least one new person, I probably felt something was off and I probably felt a little unhappy. So I, at least two three coffee meetings and at least if I've not met one new person in two, three weeks, I would feel very unhappy. And I just want to remember. Um, Amazing. Okay, I want to switch topics uh, because I want to get into some very specific tactical advice. Um, mm -hmm. I would say emails and reaching out, both cold and both what you do after the fact. And I'm just going to give you a little bit of a brain dump for people. So the first thing a lot of people watching this uh, is what do I send an email to somebody I don't know, right? And that could be a VC, that could be an exec, that could be in somebody, some other different company. And I, would, my first piece of advice to you is, uh, or, or unless you're a new person or you have an excuse like in the same company, do not ask for a meeting. Do not ask for, uh, I, I get a lot of emails where people are like, how can you be my mentor, right? I'm like, 
I don't know you. I'm sure you're an amazing person, but you know, they're like so many people ask me this. I just can't do that. So do not ask for mentorship. Do not ask for coffee meetings, right? Um, but what are you trying to accomplish? I think what you're trying to say is like, hey, I am, you know, I'm an interesting person. I want to offer value. I want to learn from you, which are all very, very great things. So the person on the other side, if you have to do a meeting with you, they have to start their calendar. There's probably some travel time. There's probably they can only do like two or three a week, and you have to be like, why is this person going to be the two and three, especially when competing with so many others? So what I often tell people. Um, is first thing is when you're sending a cold email is first explain who you are, right? Like I'm so-and-so, this is the most credible version of who I am, what I've accomplished. Now, obviously, if you accomplish great things, etc., a lot of people, especially we see, uh, will take note. But if you're not, you know, that makes it easier. But let us say you're earlier in your career and you're building up your body of work. The I would say the second thing is show some level of interest in the person you're emailing. Say like, hey, I've read this thing that you wrote or I saw this piece of news and you know and put some thought into it so it's not like oh you just googled it and wrote like hey uh, for example i we just moved to london i will tell you that this part like every single uh agent who has anything to do with real estate emailing me when i would love to respond to that except they have not no research outside of, like we have open office hmm. right and i'm like okay hey just google like just 30 more seconds now the third part and i think is very important is i think it's really hard to ask for a meeting and because people are just really busy I would suggest like offering them value, right? And the best thing to do is send them stuff to read or just say like, hey, I just wanted to put this on your radar. Now, one of the secrets about some of the most important successful people in the world, uh, which I am not, is that everyone reads their own email, right? Um, and I can attest to this, like, so all the tech founders and CEOs read their own email. And if you send an email saying like, hey, I, I'm so-and-so, I worked on this, I read this, here's something that I think you should check out they will absolutely do it. And checkout could mean something you're building, something they should read, uh, even better if it doesn't come from you. And they're going to be, oh, this person is interesting. Now, do this a few more times and you will be on the radar, right? And I will guarantee you that you will get a meeting or get to deepen the relationship. Um, uh, uh, but uh, I, I want to often, I always tell people, like, just go offer value. And some of the people I've gotten to know their level over the years are people I've done that, where I've just sent them stuff and over the years we've gotten to know each other. That's how I actually met uh, like Mark actually emailed me, but a lot of others uh, I met that way. But often, sometimes people email me and I'm like, oh, this person's really smart. They send me interesting things. And after you know a few of these, I'm like, oh, I really want to find out more about this person. So that's on the cold email front. Uh, obviously, if you're a founder trying to raise around, send an email. So that's the VC job. But often, mostly a lot of people here are maybe not founders. Now, now, the other interesting part, I think, is what happens after that first meeting. And this is where I, I don't know why a lot of people just do a coffee meeting and then they forget it. And all, all, I'm sure all of us have the experience where like, oh, I met this person like two years ago. We had a great meeting and then nothing, right? Maybe you connect yeah. on LinkedIn and that was it and nothing, right? We all have people like that. And I want you to avoid being in the category, right? Now, I think, uh, you know, one way to do it, a lot of people are like, hey, we haven't caught up in like a year and a half, let's meet. I will tell you that if the other person is older, they have kids, family, job, it's super hard. And you're going to be like, we should catch up sometime. Let's schedule something. And you're in this infinite scheduling loop, which will never really happen unless yeah. you know you have a deep relationship. A much uh, what I find what, what I really find enjoyable and I like to do is when I see something I know the other person will like, or definitely the other person had a career accomplishment or life accomplishment. LinkedIn is great for this, or uh, you know, just stuff shows up in the press, uh, or just reaching out to them every once in a while, like people's birthdays. I just send them a note and I love receiving notes from the other people to be like, hey, I was, I just saw this piece of news. I was thinking of you. And what it shows is that you are thinking about them and um, with no expectation of anything in return. And that means a lot to people. So I love, like, I'm, I'm very petty. I love getting notes from people like, hey, hey, I just saw this. I thought it'd be great. Oh, wow. You, you're my, no, my favorite person for the next like 30 minutes. And, uh, so, uh, uh, and so anyway, TLDR is the cold emails both on the how to send it to a new person but also sometimes more importantly, what do you do after you meet somebody? Very, very key. I think if there is one thing that you want to take away from this whole thing, it's to, I think networking as a phrase, as a term has just gotten such a bad rep. You know, it's just, uh, it's, you know, when we were very early on in our careers, we would all, we would sometimes find like some senior folks being like, oh yeah, you network. And they would say it in like a kind of a derogatory way. It's just like, oh yeah, you're doing something that's not your work kind of thing. And if there's one thing that I want you to take away from this, depending on no matter where you are in your career, you have to change that perception of what that is. Like it doesn't doesn't matter that there are always going to be people who will say things that are negative about what you're doing, whether it is networking or something else, you're always going to have that cohort of people and you have to ignore them. But you're doing this because you want to know what other people are doing, what they're thinking, work with them in the future. 
and you now you have the internet you have all of these like amazing tools at your disposal and uh, it's it's just this amazing world for you to go play in right like you have to kind of think about it from a first principle standpoint on net new i'm starting over would i not want to connect with all these yeah. people who are not similar to me who geographically are so far apart and now i have a way to like know them work with them talk to them connect with them send them notes all of this why wouldn't you do that and so i want you to kind of take away everything you've learned that's bad and associated with the word networking yeah. kind of flip it on its head and look at it as like how do you connect with as many people as possible with the tools that you now have that even like your you know parents grandparents didn't have mm -hmm. to be able to accelerate and move further ahead in building things um you know trying out new stuff and like getting new domains to you know work with each other yeah. cross pollinate with each other yeah. that's kind of how i want you to take away from this whole thing yeah. now i have a question for you because one of the things we've talked about uh, over the years and i think you and many others have brought up is this is often different or maybe harder for women in yeah. maybe different dimensions <laughs> uh, yeah. do you want to talk about that yeah i do um look this is a, it's a bit controversial uh, but look we're far enough along in our careers i can say this um i've generally noticed i wouldn't say most but many women are really bad at it are bad at networking um and i say this in like some tangible ways right i've often had if you're in like a specific tech conference or something i've often had women show up and be like i'm here to network will you network with me i'm not even making this up like people would just oh, they, 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 say, they say literally the words i want to network with you yes will okay. you network with me and you're like okay like i've not heard that before but sure um they i i often find that the rules are not different between like men and women and uh, how they network that kind of thing but women seem to apply it in like a not an effective way i don't really know how else to explain it um but i think part of it is like one you know if especially in technology there are fewer women in in your own cohort like if you are say an engineer product manager um or whatever is your title that cohort if you look around there are probably fewer women there and maybe that's why i can't really tell but i i kind of want to like there are times when i would like sit down and talk to specific women to be like okay here is kind of what you do here is like kind of what uh you can get out of this and so often i've noticed that women will think of networking as show up at a conference and say hello to every one of them and never talk to them ever again the rest of their lives and they will come home and be like i had a great day of networking and i i want to be like you could not be more wrong than this uh if you had even just met two people but built really deep lasting relationships there that would go such a long way uh because there are so few people like you in that same sector it should actually be easier for you not harder so aim for quality than quantity uh you don't have to show up in every place and kind of like attend every conference attend every event like that kind of thing uh but also don't not network i don't know who's been telling you what uh, i don't know what you've learned but no matter where you are in your in your career you're going to have to put yourself out there and it is good for you it is good for your promotion your career opportunities outside whether you want to start a company and how effectively you'll run that company whether you'll fundraise it is important that you reach out and do stuff that is outside of your day job because uh all good things come out of that and i uh i feel like very early on in their careers they just told to not do it and they just stick in that path and i don't know why this happens um i went through that pretty early on in my career until like i think you there were a few other folks so i will i was like wait a second like everyone else is like really good at this and i have to like kind of build this whole muscle that i didn't have uh and it just helped me a lot right so there's that also um tangibly what can you do if nothing else every week if you said i'm going to send out two cold emails mm -hmm. this week and start there like start somewhere quantifiable and small i'm sure you can come up with two people you can cold email right and you can like be curious want to get to know them offer help mm -hmm. um or send them stuff to read like you said 
but just follow the general tactics of cold email like start in a very small place instead of being like i have been not networking for the last year i am going to show up at these two conferences and meet everybody don't do that that's not the right way to do it and so it just turn it around quality over quantity start with cold emails if you don't really know how to progress um you know just send us a note and maybe you know send me a note you you know where to find me and uh we can kind of like at least connect you with some folks and like i can at least like tangibly help you because i know a lot of women who've like started out being like i don't want to do it mm-hmm. or i'm too afraid i'm too scared i'm too worried and you often realize like down the road that all of those worries and fears were all just like not not placed in the right way like it's it's completely unfounded so um i know that was like a lot of talk over a few things but you just have to like focus and put effort into it and start small and keep getting better over time no i definitely see you mentor a lot of young women on this topic uh, it's interesting i don't know i don't know the answer why it's different for women than men um i try to uh, but yeah i definitely reach out to put the words but definitely i know arti helps a lot of people with this uh i know we're out of time i think one last thought i think maybe i want to leave people with on this is um if you're listening to this i know at top of the hour we saw, spoke about how this is very very key to professional success and i think it's true but i think there is a other part of it which is these turn out to often be some of the most fulfilling personalities you want up having a lot of these people i've met uh for whatever reason um want to become great friends and we know each other went to each other's weddings or know each other's kids and so on uh, because so much of what we, we in our work lives for a lot of us are so tied to what who we are and what we spend time on the people that you wind up interacting with wind up becoming your friends over the next 5 10 15 years so yeah. uh you'll be surprised how much how rewarding it can be and how much it can for form part of your life but uh, this was, yeah this was this, i think this broad explore on this topic but i think you know we covered some of the bases i don't know what do you think uh, i i think we covered a decent amount here and you know if there are specific arcs branches that you want us to go cover we've been doing this for a long time it wasn't taught to us and so we've had to learn this kind of by ourselves and so if there's any part of this is helpful send us a note leave a comment um if uh, any of these you disagree with mm-hmm. leave a comment too i want to know and uh, and yeah just you know let us know what else we can go cover in this similar set of topics cohort of topics um because we love doing this stuff right like you know we've worked in this industry for so long that now we can look back and figure out like what lessons we've learned and can hopefully can tell you so you don't have to make the same mistakes that we did that's sure. um so yeah send us a note and if there's anything else that we should be talking about would love to know yeah and i, re- I love receiving cold emails of all kinds but always want to do one of these because then you you see to see like what kind of emails people actually send you be like to see whether they're paying attention or not but this was great so this is a blast i always always uh, leave us a review leave us a comment or reach out to us any which shape or form but thank you for listening thank you so much until next thank week thank you folks bye